slide sharing. Okay. So our presentation today, the title is OpenStack, the perfect virtual infrastructure manager for a virtual evolved packet core, a VEPC. So, Hi, I'm Rima Yontel. I'm a senior architect at Red Hat. I've been with Red Hat for over three years. Before that, I spent a long time working for a big telco in North America. And basically, my whole career has been telco. My name is Julio Villarreal Pellegrino. Uh, right now, I am a principal architect at Red Hat. Uh, I work for the cloud practice, and I lead OpenStack architecture for North America. Uh, part of my current role, I work with some of the biggest telco in North America and Latin America. Uh, like 99% open stack. <laughs> so the way that we want to start this, and as you could notice uh, before we started the presentation, we're going to be using this tool called uh, Poll Everywhere. And we're going to do three surveys during our presentation. Uh, this is the first survey that we want to get from you guys. And is how are you feeling about the VEPC uh, use case in OpenStack? So if you, call, if you guys could start answering, uh, you could also go to polev.com slash Red Hat 2017 in your laptops to vote. So, okay, we have a couple votes on the yellow face. Oh, actually, somebody's almost full happy here. Oh, it's not anymore. He came back. Okay. Yeah, okay. pretty much most people are standing in the middle. Yes, yeah, in the middle. Yeah, people are ambivalent about it. But, but this is a really good thing because, like, a couple of years ago, most people used to be on the other spectrum of, the, of this really sad red face. So we have a couple... A couple of ones actually on well, the. Some people the, are really happy. Wow, that's yeah, excellent. Yeah, really happy that's about, about the VPC use case yeah. in OpenStack. Very nice. Great. So I think that we have a consensus. You know, like we are uh, either in the, in the middle or, or to, yeah. to full happiness with the VPC use case. We're glad to see nobody is really unhappy about exactly. it. Exactly. That's a good news for us. So let's start, let's start just discussing a little bit about, about the XC uh, NFB framework. And um, we, want to, we want to start covering XE because this will be part of the foundation for what we're going, we going to be talking today. And they charge us every time we don't show this framework exactly. in a yeah. presentation about NFE. If, if you do a telco presso and you don't put that, you know, it's... it's they fine you. Yeah. <laughs> so what about XE? Like, like, we have a couple, couple things that we want to touch on the XE framework. Uh, most of, the, most of the talks that, that you will get in OpenStack Summit are surrounded this lower side of the XE uh, uh, standard, the NFBI side, uh, where you have the, the pool of resources and the, and, the, and the BIM, the Virtualized Infrastructure Manager. Now, in the, in the last couple of years, the transition is to move uh, telco applications into the, into the BNF and the EMS side of, of the layer and combine that with orchestration. So we want to, we want to go a little bit beyond the traditional open stack talk, uh, just about the NFBI and the BIM, and focus on our presentation today on the, on the other layer. Now, as, as I've been saying, open stack right now fix these two buckets. It fix the BIM bucket, and it fix the NFBI bucket. So that, that's, that's where we are right now. And we're going to be discussing how are we using OpenStack right now for our customer deployments? We are going to have a couple examples in how this is being done on the field. Uh, we, we got one of our partners to, to agree with us to share their architecture publicly here today at OpenStack Summit for some of the deployments that we've done with them. And, and we are going to be uh, showcasing that too. But, but the, the traditional XC framework, uh, we are going to be beyond the OpenStack layer today. Now, I have another survey, and, and this is about deployment of, a EV, of VEPC on OpenStack. How many of you have actually a VEPC deployment on OpenStack right now? And how many of you are planning to have a VEPC deployment on, on OpenStack? OK. 
okay? We have, we have a yes, and, and that's usually really weird, okay? Planning. I'm Switching. glad there's some yeses already. Yes, excellent. Um, okay. Not as many as planning, but. So this is really interesting. You know, like, like part of this big transformation uh, on the telco is being towards getting there, is to, is to get uh, BNF deployments. And I, I see a bunch of planning within a year. So uh, a lot of you are thinking to actually tackle this. Uh, all, other big size of the crowd doesn't want to do or doesn't have any plans about deploying VPC on OpenStack. That's interesting. Yep. All right. All right. So from the answers that we saw in the poll, I assume a lot of you already know what EPC is. But just in case, you know, to level set, um, Evolve Packet Core is a core network for providing 4G LTE services. And it's been defined by 3GPP. It's been around since um, about 2008, I think, uh, from release eight of G uh, 3GPP architecture. And what it does is takes the network from circuit switch or from circuit switch and packet switch um, to fully packet switched IP network for providing uh, telco uh, multimedia services. So it's uh, voice data um, all, uh, and video all on the same network and all transported by IP over, uh, in packets. So completely eliminated, uh, eliminated circuit switch network. And it's one of the characteristics is separating control and user planes. So you can scale them separately and manage them uh, separately if you need to. So it's a more flexible uh, approach to deployment. Um, and virtual EPC is simply taking that and putting it in a virtualized environment. Um, it's just a framework of, on how you deploy that type of network. And it, this is very, very simplified view. Like, very simplified because you don't want to see what the whole thing looks like, really. I've done that to people, and the only thing worse, I think, is putting up the IMS uh, diagram because that just scares people. Uh, so what are the components, the main components? Not exhaustive. Uh, obviously, first, you have the access network, which is really the LTE network, even though sometimes we apply the term to the whole thing. But the access network, also, also defined by 3GPP, you call UTRAN. Um, so you have your device, cell phone, you know, smartphone, uh, anything with the connection, 4G connection on it, which connects to the antenna. Antenna connects to E node B, which is Evolve node B. It's a base station in the LTE network. Uh, and then you have your actual Evolve packet core, which is serving gateway. Uh, PDN gateway, MME, and HSS uh, all together. And uh, there, part of them are user plane and part of them are control plane. So if you look at MME, uh, that's your mobility management um, and that's your control plane and it's responsible for uh, keeping track of your device, for instance, paging it when it's uh, idle, um, <laughs> signaling to, uh, to the device. Then you have serving gateway and uh, PDN gateway. Serving gateway is responsible for interconnect to the actual access network, and uh, P gateway connects you to the external network. Uh, in this case, I have internet, but whatever is on that side. Uh, and that also provides in connectivity into other services that uh, operator provides. Uh, example is IMS. This is what gives you your voice services. Um, and PCRF is there just to show that there is policy enforced on this network for provider. Uh, HSS is where your subscriber data lives. So um, why move from this EPC to the virtual EPC? EPC has been around for a while. It's well established. Operators know, know how to deal with it. 
Um, you buy uh, appliances from your vendors, you put them in your network, everybody is happy, it works, you have your services, operator gets their revenue. Why, why move from that? Why do you need to, to do anything, you know, if it's not broken, you know, don't fix it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, operators notice that the cost of maintaining this appliance-based uh, setup is going up much faster than their revenues, not good. Uh, so one of the imperatives to transition from the appliance-based model to the virtualized model is cost. Um, and cost is a complex thing. It's not just I pay for my appliances, I put them in, but it's um, all the associated um, operational costs, right? So OPEX, CAPEX, all the components, it's how fast I can introduce my services. If it takes me 18 months, uh, I lose 18 months of revenue on that new service. Or somebody gets there before me, which takes us to the competi competitors, the, the disrupting telcos. So over the top, players come in and provide those services way faster than the operators, traditional operators, and they've noticed that, right? So need to fix it. And one other um, reason they're looking at it is they know what's coming down the pipeline. 4G is by no means the end of it because there's already 5G in the works. Next year we're expecting it to be standardized. They're already planning trials of it for Korea Olympics. So they know it's coming and it's already been developed in the standards as a virtualized solution because otherwise the cost of deploying it and maintaining it is gonna be astronomical uh, because it's a whole new paradigm of the architecture. Uh, and also there's huge increase of, uh, in data that uh, you have to carry through your network. If you have to put physical appliances every time you know, your data goes up, and those physical appliances are those customized ASIC-based uh, appliances, the cost is um, astronomical again, right? And then you have IoT and other connected devices, and who knows what else? Uh, the landscape is changing so fast, sometimes you can't predict what's gonna be, you know, what's around the corner. So all of these reasons are why virtual EPC is the solution. It, saves you money now, it prepares you for the future, and it helps you uh, compete. Now let's, let's do another survey. Um, and this one is, is a little bit uh, fun. Actually, uh, if you could put in one word uh, the answer for this question, why to use OpenStack as a BIM? You know, OpenStack is not the only virtual infrastructure manager out there. Like, we have customers that are using other solutions. And Fortunately, they are moving into the OpenStack uh, side of the world. But wh why, why is driving the adoption of OpenStack for you? You know, why? Because you're here in OpenStack conference, so I assume that you are either looking at OpenStack or you are using OpenStack already. So why are you using OpenStack? Could you, if you could please answer with one word, and by the way, you could repeat answers. You could type the same answer from that, that, that other people type. Um, Nothing yet. I just hope that the software is working. Well, give it a few more seconds if people, if people don't come up with answers, we're gonna have to do it for you guys. We're gonna tell you why you're using OpenStack as a win. Right. So I see a couple of people type in, so. Uh, just checking the Facebook. Yeah. Is either typing for this or? It's not going? Okay, let me refresh it. Oh, that's weird. All right, well, next time. Yeah, that, that's, Sorry that's about weird. That. Sorry about that. Um, next. Yeah, we, I, I could check, I could check, the, I could check the after, for sure. But now, why open a for the bin? And, and we want to put a couple, couple bullet points here, and we don't want to crowd slides that much, but I think that it's really important to call out a couple of the reasons why open stack adoption 
is, is being on the, on the rise for, for, for the telco, and in this case for the uh, VEPC use case. So we, we talk to a lot of customers, a lot of big telcos in North America, a lot of big telcos around Asia, Europe, and, and Latin America too. So th these are recurring items of the conversation of reasons that are driving adoption. Uh, number one is the ability to control pool of resources. And, 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 that's, and that's a core principle of the EXI slide that we put before, you know, like the, if that, that we mentioned, if we don't put this slide here, uh, we could get thrown out of the conference. So that, that, that's, a, that's a core principle of, of, of that uh, NFBI uh, component on the EXI design. Uh, and, and is to provide compute, is to provide storage, is to provide networking to the platform. And now with OpenStack, it's going a little bit beyond that, you know? We have new projects that are being consumed by some of the, e, uh, of the VEPCs out there, like, like Barbican, and, and, and people are really getting creative in how they're adopting OpenStack on the telco space. Uh, the other part, like, and, and for us as, uh, like, working for an open source company, is a big point uh, for the adoption process is uh, open source software. You know, like, like we love that, that uh, what open source uh, means on, 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 on OpenStack, you know, and, and, and that's, that's why we, uh, uh, we, we think that big part of the growth for OpenStack is being because open source because of this community that is together this week here. Uh, another component is the modular part of OpenStack. Like when we do designs, uh, we tend to tailor the design for the use case. You don't have to deploy everything. You could go and deploy just the components that are going to be used on that specific use case. And, and that ability is part of the modular uh, design of OpenStack. Uh, another good, good point that we want to make is, uh, is super extendable, you know, pluggable components. And a, a, a good one for us and for the, and for the VPC vendors is expose open APIs. And right now we are in a place that most uh, VPCs out there, they are not cloud ready. But by having these exposed open APIs, vendors could work towards a cloud ready VPC. Uh, we have a couple other, you know, like multi-tenancy, that's, that's important. And we're gonna talk a little bit about different deployment models of, of VPC applications. And, and there is one model that supports this a multi-tenancy uh, take, and um, platform resiliency, high availability. Like, w when we started doing OpenStack a couple years ago, uh, people used to say, oh, you guys are crazy. This will never become mainstream. Uh, now we see that, that OpenStack is mainstream. It's used by, by telcos, no, <laughs> no, no, no other than a telco is using OpenStack for critical workloads. And um, why is that happening? It's because you, you could have, like, like highly available control planes, you could, you could get the highly resilient platform. Uh, another one for, for the telcos is, is the idea of providing mechanisms to collect fall and perform data. Like, like telcos are obsessed with metrics, and that's a good thing, and OpenStack provides that capability, and it's been improving in the last couple of years. It's not a new thing, and it's not gonna stop evolving. That, that's, that's the way that we see it on the community. Uh, so why would virtual EPC on OpenStack specifically be a good idea? Um, so OpenStack is a vehicle for uh, telcos to become more agile, more flexible, have a more affordable uh, solutions, uh, elastic, right? You can scale it in and scale it out uh, on demand. And you can have high performance so if you utilize the optimization features available in OpenStack, you can achieve performances on par for, from the specialized appliances that your virtual PC used to run on. So these are the main reasons why OpenStack, in addition to what Julio already covered, uh, why uh, OpenStack is in the running for this. Um, yes. And, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about OpenStack, you know, like uh, I'm, an, I'm an OpenStack lover. <laughs> so um, um, one of the points on the previous slide was optimized platform. Like, like where, where are we right now on the optimizations on OpenStack for the telco use case? Um, not only for the telco use case, like I've I done a couple of projects with uh, research facilities, you know, like higher education that are using the same features 
that were put into OpenStack thinking about the telco application. So the, the, the idea to, to be able to, to optimize the platform is, is a necessity for the telco wor uh, workload. You, you cannot have a telco workload without these optimizations. And, and these are a must if you are deploying or thinking to deploy OpenStack on a telco environment. Uh, and the, the first point I want to make is, is on the compute side, uh, what we call uh, EPA, Enhanced Platform Awareness. And, and we could start with, uh, with, with huge pages. You know, like for, for some people it's not important, but if you are running a telco application, or, or, you, or you, you need to have a support of huge pages most likely. So, um, um, and to allow that capability to work is part of what is enabling OpenStack for the telco. The other part is uh, CPU pinning, you know, like uh, allows to, to assign a virtual CPU and associate uh, threads to dedicate CPU cores with dedicated uh, applications. So you could do that. Uh, thread affinity is being, is being a, a, a big thing for the telco, you know, like it's really weird that you get, go to a place that, that these components are not there. And the last but not least on this slide is NUMA awareness, right? If you go to think about a high performing application on OpenStack, you need to meet these requirements. You need to have these capabilities in order for your application to perform, for your application to be able to, to run better than normal, right? And, and, and that's what makes a design and the architecture of a use case, a specific cloud for the telco, really important. In this case, for the adoption of BEPC on, on the telcos. Now, we, we, could, we could continue, and, and this is where the telco uh, lives. You know, it's the, it's the network side. That, that's, where, that's, where, that's where we are every day on the telco. And, and when you talk to telco operators, like that they are used to the system integrator uh, on, the, on the past to bring this humongous truck of equipment and put it there and maintain it for them and take care of that, and, and, and you go and talk to them, the, the, most of, of telco people background is on the networking side. That's, that's what they live on. That's, that's what they know better than anyone. So these features are really important for them. You know, like DPDK enable OBS. And, and we've been doing testing with some of our partners, and, and the performance is, is just amazing. You know, like getting uh, 12, 14 million packages per second, that, that, that could only be enabled by these kind of technologies. And then you have other technologies like SRIOV, PCI pass-through, when you want to go uh, and, and get more serious traffic. Uh, for, for us uh, at Red Hat, uh, we, we take a lot of consideration when we are deploying telco applications on the storage backend. Um, and why is this? Like, I.O. is important, and, and we like to, to, to reiterate this to people. It's like, when you are designing your cloud for your VPC or for your IMS core, please take in consideration I.O. Like, like I.O. could kill your, your, your VNF. Um, in OpenStack, it's more than just uh, the Cinder backend, you know, like, <laughs> it's, it's about object, if, if the application is using object storage, it's about ephemeral, it's about glance, it's like how fast could be your backend, how tailored is your backend for your I.O. requirement. And that, uh, that kind of capability is provided by OpenStack. Like, either with different kind of uh, storage backends, or with, in, in our case, we do most of our deployment with Ceph. And we could go and we could tailor that, we could design that backend for the, uh, a VEPC like, like to tune it and to, for the best performance in this case. Uh, another part is uh, multiple network types uh, uh, support, you know, like and commercial SDN implementations. Uh, we, we are in this, in this great moment in OpenStack that networking is evolving. And it's evolving within the community and it's evolving from the vendors that are supporting OpenStack. Like th th there, is, th there is out there a flavor for anything that you want networking wise from big vendors like Cisco, like Nokia, to, to small players that are, are, are working really hard to provide viable solutions for telco applications and for commercial applications. Uh, another point uh, in why OpenStack is the full isolation uh, with affinity, anti-affinity, uh, host aggregates, availability zones. So that capabilities need to be taken care of on the design phase for your architecture, for your BEPC workload. So, uh, telco applications, I already mentioned a few times, started as physical appliances, which is, oops, uh, which is what, sorry, uh, you got a little preview of what's coming up, uh, which is what PNF is, and then they move into virtualized network functions, and 
this is where you are. I know many vendors want to believe they're somewhere here or this is, this is not happening, not at all. But no, everybody's here right now. No matter what they tell you, don't believe them. What they did was take the physical appliance, take the software, poured it into a virtualized container, and said, okay, we're done. They're not. They have to move forward. Otherwise, um, basically, all the benefits that you derive from the virtualized um, world are going to be negated, pretty much, because the world is moving forward so quickly. If you want to keep up, you have to be cloud native. You have to have microservices. You have to take your application, rethink its design, its architecture. You have to rewrite it, recreate it, microservices. You have to be able to handle each component separately. They have to scale separately. They have to recover the way that you can recover containers, et cetera. All the benefits of actually living in the cloud. Because what's happening right now is you're tailoring cloud to support your VNFs you're not designing applications to live in the cloud. And that's not the right way to go, in our opinion, or my personal opinion, not necessarily uh, anybody else's. She's usually right. <laughs> so I won't argue with I that. even have a t-shirt that says I'm always right, so. Uh, this is just an example. Uh, it's not necessarily what it looks like if you take an actual commercial implementation of virtual EPC. This is just like an idealized uh, look at it. And um, because they're not even necessarily breaking up their uh, virtual EPC components like the way I'm showing, what's important here is to show you that every component has to be deployed on multiple nodes because you want to have your high availability. And depending on how many, you know, how resilient you want your application to be, that's how many computes you will scatter it around. And the other important thing here is actually VNFM, so Virtualized Network Function Manager. It's out here hanging out there on purpose. Um, I've seen this being deployed on the compute nodes along with the actual uh, application. It's not a good way of doing it. You compromise your security, um, you compromise uh, potentially uh, how your application is performing, how your application is managed. Um, it has to be outside, really. And if you want your application to be ready for generalized VNFM, as opposed to specific VNFM, which is what we're seeing right now, because uh, especially for virtual EPC, because it's such a complex application. But if you want to have it ready, you have to uh, expect the VNFM to be living outside of the space. You have to be able to manage it, uh, your application, even though they're not necessarily residing on the same like tenant networks, etc. And uh, from the networking point of view, so we can see the control plane and the data planes are clearly separated. And this is actually collapsed a little bit because I've seen uh, for east-west traffic, you would be using, say, tenant networks or uh, and for uh, north-south, you would be using provider networks or some combination of those, depending on what type of performance you need uh, internal uh, for the control plane and data plane of the actual application versus the control plane of the cloud. So um, these are a few of the deployment models uh, that we're seeing out in the wild. Not so much this one, but this is quite common right now. And this is essentially the appliance model. Uh, so it's fully integrated virtual appliance. It's black because it looks like a black box to the operator. Uh, vendor, yes, there is OpenStack running in there somewhere, but it's transparent to the operator. Vendor delivers the box uh, inside, you know, something. Good operators actually know what they're appliances and applications look like inside, but it's managed outside of the cloud platform of the operator if the operator has a cloud platform. So it's only interacting with the operator network and OSS BSS systems, essentially. Uh, then you have a dedicated platform. So here you would probably have a cloud that's operated by the service provider, but it's only running that one application. 
nothing else. So it's completely optimized to the requirements of that application. It's a step forward, but you're still not there. Uh, and this is the nirvana, right? This is the utopia. This is where you want to be um, if you're a service provider. You have your cloud platform with your orchestration, potentially with uh, you know, general, general VNFM, et cetera, and you can drop your uh, applications on that platform, and that's where multi-tenancy comes into play. This is where you want to make sure you have isolation uh, between the applications for security purposes, for fault isolation, et cetera, but it's one managed platform. You know, you, you, you know all of the components in it, so that's where you want to be, really. And uh, the next few slides are courtesy of Ericsson, uh, who are one of our partners and uh, generally, uh, generously uh, allowed me to use these. Just to give you an idea of what an actual real life virtual EPC looks like right now, right? Um, some of the ar architectural approaches that Ericsson followed when they came up with it and they ported, essentially they ported the existing EPC into the virtualized space, which I already mentioned how, uh, uh, how vendors are doing this. Uh, so they have a cluster of VMs and they have lifecycle management for it with their specialized VNFM, so that's, they're very specific. Nobody else can use that VNFM, it's just for this application. Um, it's on par, feature set, to their physical uh, EPC. Uh, but they have a deployment flexibility that they didn't have with that physical uh, EPC because IoT devices versus uh, mobile broadband, right? Um, you have completely different requirements for the sizing. So they, you can deploy this on uh, VMs that are from 4 to 40 virtual, C consume from 4 to 40 virtual CPUs. So huge difference, right? But you have to make that decision when you're deploying. You're not gonna be able to scale, scale it up or down. Um, uh, so that's, that's a design decision you make when you are looking at your actual use case. And it can work with existing uh, EPC deployments, so physical EPC, uh, seamlessly. Uh, so there's no impact on EPC to actual uh, UE interaction. And it's uh, 3G, 3GPP compliance, so if you already have an EPC by somebody else, you can still drop in uh, Ericsson's virtual EPC, what the? Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, these are some of the principles that they've used, right? Redundancy, um, definitely all the resiliency, all the requirements you had in the physical world, you still want them uh, in the virtual world. You don't want to lose any of that. And I think we uh, covered what those are already, so. Mm, well, that doesn't I'm look that good, but yeah, there is a cloud around each of these. It looked way better <laughs> when I drew it. <laughs> I promise, okay, oh, it looks there you go. <laughs> we, we, we are, we are, we're using Google All right, slides, so, so um, this is the deployment models, right? You can de deliver virtual EPC in a box, right? All um, on one server for like a branch or something like that, very small deployment, edge deployment maybe. So you're running all the components of the virtual EPC on that one server. Uh, or you can have one server that with one component running on it, dedicated. Uh, then you have what they call a compact deployment, right? You have multiple servers and you basically have re uh, high availability, uh, so you have multiple ver uh, multiples of each component scattered around the different servers. And then you can have like really high resilient, um, high availability uh, model where you just deploy one component on multiple servers. So basically, and all the resiliency features are handled in the application, not on the hardware layer, but on the application layer, right? So they have internal high availability, they have load balancing, all of those features inside, built into the application. Now, th this, is, this is the fun part, right? Like, and, and this is where most of the pain 
is right now for the open stack operators on the telco space and on the non-telco space. Um, how are we going to get these uh, VEPC applications and we're going to create an operation stack around them, right? Like how, how the telco is moving from the traditional uh, way to operate their, their, their EPCs into the VEPC. And in the case of OpenStack, uh, as you could see, we have, we have couple, co couple things that we put on this slide. And, and this idea, and we are running a little bit out of time, we have no, five no. minutes, so I'm gonna flow through. This idea that you need, to, you need to be able to monitor your infrastructure and your application. As Rima was saying, the, most of the vendors are putting redundancy always on the application, and that's how it should be, but that doesn't mean that your infrastructure, your open stack, is not important. So building techniques to monitor uh, these, 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 these private clouds is really important and, and part of, of the way to operationalize uh, open stack. The, the other part is reporting alarming, and alarming. And it's going a little bit beyond uh, monitoring and be able to uh, report on metrics and, and create alarms for your VEPC deployment in this case. Uh, be able to automate, you know, like use automation methods, use heat for orchestration, use other outside tools like Ansible in order to, to, to automate deployment and automate a, a scale out and in operations for your VEPC. Uh, the Nirvana is be able to repair on the fly. You know, like what are the actions that we need to take from a, from a system, from an operation point of view on OpenStack if we need to repair a failure, you know, like if we lost a song, if, if we lost a, a complete site, what are the actions? How we are going to, to put this repair uh, paradigm with the automation point? How we are going to merge these two and, and get to a point that, that we could uh, seamlessly uh, operate an open stack cloud on the telco, uh, on the telco without, without any problems? And, and the other part is securing, you know, like, and, and I love to talk about security. I love, I love to talk uh, uh, to my customers about SB compliance, about SE Linux, about, uh, about being a little bit paranoid. B because you should be paranoid when, when you are running a telco. And, and that's an important part. In the case of our OpenStack platform, we are, we've been doing that. We've been focused a lot on security, focused a lot on SB compliance, SE Linux, uh, firewalling, like be able to uh, delimit uh, the, the perimeters within the, the cloud. And, 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 and those are all important components, you know, for the operators, for the users, for everyone. So that, that's, that's right now where we should focus on the community, the, the operator size of OpenStack, not the telco guys that are deploying the BPC uh, clouds, and, and get to a point that we could merge, you know, like we could go to that DevOps approach, that we could, that we could get these hybrid things that understand the application running and understand the infrastructure running, because that, that's the trend right now. So, you want to take over? Yeah. Yep. Um, and so one other thing that uh, Hue did mention, we had little people in that picture. You have to think about your organization as well when you're doing this, uh, because you have to change how your operations uh, people are working together from your platform and your application point of view. And then, um, so you operationalize your platform, but you also need to operationalize your actual application. Uh, and that includes the whole life cycle of the application from uh, when you deploy it, how you onboard it, uh, how you validate it, how you actually put subscribers on it, because you know, until you have subscribers, it doesn't matter what you've done. It's all, uh, you, you want to start getting revenues out of it. Um, how do you scale your application, right? How do you add additional components? How do you grow it? Is it, you need to have automation, which we already mentioned, for the application to be able to do it all automatically because when you deploy in virtual environments at scale, uh, you don't want to have a person looking at everything. You want everything taken care of automatically. Uh, how do you repair and self-heal if something fails? Uh, you need to have all of these implemented as part of your operational tool set to be able to achieve, uh, to achieve this self-healing. And then how do you do upgrades? How do you do patches? How do you do rollbacks? Uh, how do you, um, it, it's not explicitly called out, but how do you decommission things? Uh, you want to take things out once, uh, once you're not using them. So these are actually uh, in the boxes. These are the tools that you have to implement to have your fully operational application. Uh, and 
these are actually not even specific to virtual EPC. These are applicable to any other Talca application that you're gonna be deploying. And at this, uh, this is it. Thank you very yes. much. Thank you and very much for coming. Uh, we run out of time for, for questions. For questions, but, but if you want to come up and talk to yeah, us, we're, we're going to be, be outside. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be on the yeah. corner outside. Mm -hmm. Right, we didn't have time to cover all that, but there are tools that allow you to bridge across the data centers. So from the networking point of view, for instance, uh, there are some SDN implementations, and that's what we usually recommend our customers, not to go with the um, vanilla, you know, neutron implementation, but SDN. That's really simple, right? Like, no. there are a couple of ways that you could do multi data center deployment with OpenStack. No, no, so he's talking about VNFM specifically. The VNFM, okay. Uh, we don't implement VNFM. So we would provide, uh, OpenStack would provide tools for the VNFM providers to be able to reach all the components that they need. Uh, and the operational tools, VNFM needs uh, information on if failures, right, to be able to do lifecycle management, et cetera. So OpenStack can provide that type of information, feed it into the VNFM. How VNFM itself handles multi-tenancy right now is up to the whoever provides the VNFM. Thank you very much.